Triggers are one of those things that can become a noose around your neck. I want to talk about what makes a good trigger. Now, that seems a bit weird, like what, you know, a trigger is a trigger, surely. But triggers are one of those things that can become a noose around your neck. And I thought I'd show you that with a bit of a demo. I'm going to change my date format to be quite long so we can see the minutes and seconds, just so we can actually detect some data as we're going along here. I've got a sequence called customer seek. It's going to be used for primary key. And I've got a table called customers. And the, really, this is just customer information. The column I want you to keep an eye on is the one called status. And by default, it's active. So we have the status of a customer. When we create a customer, by default, they'll be an active customer. And I'm going to have a trigger, just a very similar trigger to what we would commonly have on a column, just to when you simply change a row, we're going to update the updated column with sysdate such that we know that that row has been changed. One of those common things we do with triggers. I'm going to insert a value into customer and have a look. And it's all working as I expect. The sequence was populated. The status is active as a default. Created is populated, but updated is null because we haven't updated it yet. If I update that customer, then the updated column gets updated via the trigger. So everything's cool. We're, we're, our application is working as we'd expect. Okay, let me artificially put some extra data in now. I've got a thousand customers now inserted into the table. And what I'm gonna do is now reflect some typical uh, activity that's happened as part of my application. I'm going to pick, what have I got here? 10 customers, um, every third customer, set their status to being deleted. So if I look at the data now, this is a representation of the application after, say, a few months. Obviously, the time scales are much shorter for this demo. But you can see most of our customers are active, and there's the occasional customer that has been deleted. And because that was an update, we can see the updated column has been populated as well. At which point, we've suddenly realized that we have a bug in our application. The opposite of active is not deleted. It was meant to be active and inactive. Now, we should have had a check constraint on the table. Maybe that was forgotten. And therefore, we've actually got data corruption there. We shouldn't have had the word deleted in there. What do I have to do? Well, it's easy. I mean, you know, it's just a bug. We fix the code and then I just do a data patch to fix up the data, update the customer table, change the status to inactive where they were all deleted. Problem solved, right? But now we have an issue. Because we have a trigger on that table, notice the updated column got updated as well. This is generally something that we often don't want to occur because a data patch often we don't want to change true data, like when the person really was made inactive. We've lost that information because the trigger fired and overwrote the previous value. And even if we did want to overwrite it, often we want to have that, at least that control. Do we want to actually change columns that the triggers would normally change when we're doing emergency data patches? So I'm going to roll back that change. This is often what we do. We say, well, we don't want the trigger to fire, so I'll disable the trigger. And then I'll run my update and you can see I've fixed the data and the updated column hasn't been touched. And so I still have an accurate and true record of when the customer became inactive. Which is all well and good, except the moment I choose to disable a trigger, what have I got? I've got an outage because I can't let my application run while that trigger is disabled. That's going to introduce brand new data corruptions because the updated column won't be touched. The moment you have to disable a trigger to do some sort of maintenance, your application is out of commission. Let's roll back that change as well. So this is what I'm proposing. As the bare minimum, if you're going to have any kind of triggers on a table, you need some mechanism to be able to selectively control if they fire or not. And this is a very simple facility. I'll, I'll put this on my blog or my GitHub. The bare minimum, what you could do. I've got a very simple package called trigger control. We've got a maintenance on flat setting, a maintenance off, and a function that tells us if the trigger is pseudo or logically enabled. And it's very easy to implement one of these things because all I have to do is create a associative array which is indexed by varchar2. You can see there. All I'm going to put in there is the trigger name that I want to be enabled or disabled. 
And so to turn maintenance on, I pass in the trigger name and I simply populate that entry. The existence of that array entry is all I need to check. To turn it off, I simply delete it. And then to see if a trigger is enabled or logically enabled, I simply say, make sure that someone hasn't set the maintenance flag for this trigger. Then I can factor that into my trigger and it's very easy to add. Rather than just having new updated equals sysdate, I'm gonna say, is this trigger enabled? I'm gonna look for the existence of this array entry. By default, the array is empty, so it won't be there. So this says, yes, the trigger is enabled, and then you can go ahead and do it. So now when it comes to doing my maintenance, I simply say, I'm in a maintenance mode in this session, so the trigger won't fire. I do my update, do my maintenance, and then I turn the maintenance off. We can see here that now I've fixed the data and I haven't interrupted that updated column. I haven't corrupted it even more. If you're going to have triggers, you need to have a mechanism of being able to selectively at session level control whether they're on or off because data maintenance things happen. Accidents do happen. One of the things I've done in terms of making sure I don't make things worse for myself is often I'll add, for example, an expiry date. So it's the same package, but what happens now is if the array is not set and the trigger is enabled. If it is there, but it's within say an hour, I've set an expiry date, then yes, you're allowed to do data maintenance, but if more than an hour goes past, then I'm gonna actually delete this entry. That's a way of saying, just in case someone turns on maintenance, does their fix and forgets to turn maintenance off, the worst that could happen is after an hour, we turn the maintenance off anyway. And you obviously can add and control as much as that as you like. Uh, you can have it, for example, just raise an error, which means we're not gonna allow anything to happen until someone fixes up this flag. But that's just an example of the way you could keep extending this mechanism to make sure you have selective control over triggers, but also have a degree of insurance policy as well. So that's what I mean by better triggers. Another option is you can use addition-based redefinition. This is a really easy way, but it only makes sense if you've already activated additions. And that comes with its own set of restrictions and things to be aware of. But if you are a site that uses EBR, a real simple way of doing maintenance is you create a brand new edition, call it maintenance, go to that edition where everything exists from the previous edition, and then you can drop the trigger because that drop only applies in this brand new edition that you're in. And then you simply run your maintenance and then you simply drop that temporary edition. And therefore the, the trigger stays active in the, the base edition. So it's a, a quick hack. If you're using additions, it's a really easy way of doing small changes to triggers and PL SQL temporarily simply by creating a new edition and then rolling it back effectively. Uh, but most people I know aren't running edition based redefinition, but if you are, you get that benefit as well.